Hey guys, Miles here, and today I'm going to be doing a project that I've been waiting to do for a few good months now. And honestly, it's definitely a topic that's close to my heart, as well as being a topic of interest and debate for some time. Have you ever noticed your favorite pony acting oddly? Now, I don't just mean simple, humorous moments that capitalize on the character exaggerating their emotions so that the audience can get a few laughs. I mean entire episodes that seem to be sprinkled evenly with a little dash of madness. So, sit back, make sure you put on your thinking cap, and let's begin. Pink Amina Diane Pie. It's no secret that Pinkie Pie is a very deep, diverse character. Not only is her backstory one that still makes people think twice about farming, but it's also the only main six backstory that leaves us possibly with more questions than answers. Why are her parents cold towards her? What exactly does rock farming entail? And why is the rock farm stationed in the middle of nowhere? While these are great questions, they may be ones we'll never get answers to. Thankfully, we can look at the evidence we're given to figure out just what's going on with this pink pony's mind. I chose to analyze her first since there's so much to say, and because it was the episode that showcased her breakdown that actually drew me to MLP in the first place. Party of One is the most discussed episode where Pinky's moment of insanity turned heads even from those outside the fandom. So. What's going on? The episode showcases Pinkie Pie as she slowly loses faith in her friends, suspecting them of leaving her behind when, in reality, they were only planning a surprise party for her. At first, it's comic, even funny, to watch her grow paranoid about what her friends are doing. But then, after interrogating Spike, this scene occurs. At first, it just seems like she's playing pretend, talking to inanimate objects, hosting a very literal party of one. But then, the objects begin to talk back. Each of them has a unique voice and opinion, and Pinky hears them just like she would hear any pony else. Not only that, but the objects also begin to move. What the hey is going on? Well, at first glance, it looks like a break from reality, which is often associated with a mental illness called schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a disease that is most commonly known for causing hallucinations, both visual and auditory. In simple English, that means the sufferer sees or hears things that aren't really there. Which, in this case, is exactly what is going on with Pinkie Pie. People with schizophrenia can also become extremely paranoid or believe grand delusions about life. So, the idea that she mentioned earlier, after suspecting her friends of hiding something, makes sense. Instantly, she jumps to the conclusion that they don't like her parties and don't want to be friends with her anymore, or that they're kicking her out of their group and throwing a going-away party. A delusion that couldn't be further from the truth. But, does this mean that Pinkie Pie is schizophrenic? In my personal opinion, no. The main reason being that she never, in the continued history of the series, experiences a moment like this ever again. No matter how stressful a situation, Pink Amina never reappears. At the end of the Party of One episode, she even goes back to being herself after being told that her delusion was wrong. Schizophrenia is a disorder that is referred to as chronic, which just basically means that it returns over and over again. But with Pinky's situation, this is the only instance of a break from reality, which excludes her from being included in the schizo category. Even while she's showcased speaking to voices of her friends while she's contemplating a situation, the hallucinations aren't persistent, and similar episodes showcase the same thing happening with other characters, which is a common thread in cartoons and has nothing whatsoever to do with mental illness. You might be saying, hold on Miles, there's gotta be something wrong with her. And, for the most part, you're right. There is something different about her, but it's not schizophrenia. It's far more likely that Pinkie Pie suffers from ADHD, a mental disorder that causes hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. And that fits Pinkie Pie to a T. She often can't stand still, is quick to jump into any situation, and loses interest in a given conversation or even checks out altogether, finding something else far more interesting to pay attention to. People with ADHD often have trouble taking on a task alone, keeping an area clean or organized, and are easily distracted, sometimes forgetting things. They also fidget, run more than walk, and have problems remaining quiet or talking with limits, often speaking quickly and without end. Sound like someone we know? Absolutely. Case closed. Rarity. 
Rarity is also another character who's no stranger to a moment of pure despair, depression, and insanity. In fact, her low points are showcased a lot more frequently than Pinkie Pie, and are events that are a reoccurring addition to the show. Like any diva, she's dramatic and sometimes takes things to another level. But is there an underlying cause for her breakdowns? Let's find out. Rarity is a bit of a control freak. She's always perfecting something, stressing about something, or working to keep her schedule in order. Not only does she run many fashion stores, but she's always in the middle of a project, preparing for one or finishing one only to begin another. But does that equate to something being wrong? First off, we have to look at the frequency of her breakdowns, the intensity and the time required to make a comeback. All of these are big factors in what may be causing her issues. Rarity's breakdowns are melodramatic, sometimes coming out of nowhere and taking place even when something really small has gone wrong. She has moments of extreme excitement, moments of harsh criticism, moments of deep sadness and despair, and moments of disinterest. There are also random moments of sentimentality, nostalgia, and even heartbreak. But she often bounces between these different emotions, sometimes all in one episode, before making an instant and miraculous recovery, only to plunge back into darkness a few episodes later. This may lead some to believe that she has a mental illness called bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a disorder that is characterized by episodes of emotions that are separated into three main categories. Manic episodes, depressive episodes, and mood episodes. Manic episodes most often cause the sufferer to feel out of touch with reality. Their energy mood may be high and they may need less sleep. They can often be over the top or seem to be excited without probable cause. Depressive episodes make the sufferer feel entirely opposite of manic episodes. They lose motivation and interest in activities, may feel low to no energy, and even tend to avoid others or keep to themselves. Mood episodes are the most long-lasting episodes of uncontrolled emotional breakdowns, highs and lows that last for days or, even in some cases, for months. They can often make someone even think dangerously. Bipolar disorder symptoms also include anxiety, anger, euphoria, hopelessness, loss of pleasure, or decreased contentedness. All too often we've seen Rarity fly off the handle, become extremely emotional, engage in self-deprecating talk, wallow in whatever ponies wallow in, and then make a comeback in a few moments only to lose her sanity mere seconds later. Not only that, but she's easily irritated, cries often over small things, can become restless and impulsive, and often estranges herself from her friends. Unlike with Pinkie Pie, Rarity's symptoms are ones that have been with her since episode one, and despite making progress, they don't seem to disappear. This makes her a prime candidate for this diagnosis. Case closed. Rainbow Dash. We're all well acquainted with the brightly maned mare Rainbow Dash. She is witty, courageous, loyal, and quick to act in any given situation. But what some of us don't notice is that she has an underlying issue many wouldn't have even thought about. Ever wondered just how Rainbow Dash can be so prideful and blunt at times? It's almost like she doesn't realize she's doing it at all. How many times has she been boastful, overly confident in her own abilities, and blind to the issues other ponies may be facing in light of her own interests? She often boasts she's the best at everything, good-looking, important, and overall irreplaceable. It even takes her some time to clue in on the things bothering her friends since she's so wrapped up in her own personal self-importance. She idolizes the Wonderbolts simply because they can rival her own abilities and only wants to associate with them out of a sense of entitlement and belonging that she seems to find less important when being around the other main five. So, did you think that was just a character trait or maybe even a personal flaw? I think it's much deeper than that. It's extremely possible that Rainbow Dash has narcissistic personality disorder. Those with this disorder are often prideful, talk only about themselves, and seek out excessive amounts of praise, attention, adoration, and flattery. They also tend to lack empathy in certain situations. Hence, the way Rainbow Dash seems to be the only one, at times, that will answer bluntly or emotionlessly to a problem she's confronted with. 
They also have a grandiose sense of self-worth that often leads others to see them as conceited. Just like with Rarity, Rainbow Dash's symptoms have been with her since she first flew across our screens. Thus, I believe that Rainbow Dash does in fact have narcissistic personality disorder. Case closed. Twilight Sparkle being the main protagonist of the story, it stands to reason that Twilight Sparkle may have just had the most to learn through the series' lifespan. She's committed, kind, and genuinely interested in the betterment of the other main five. Not only that, but she's a dedicated student whose passion for learning didn't just stop with becoming Celestia's prodigy, but continued on to even allow her to run her own school in Season 8. With that much positive change, can there really be something as large as underlying mental illness that's remained the same? The answer, undoubtedly, is yes. It's hard not to notice the constant signs sometimes hidden here and there in each episode, and there are a few scenes I don't think anyone can forget. I'll start with the most clear episode of Madness. Remember this scene? It's one that's hard to forget. In the episode, Twilight had been unable to find a friendship problem to write to Princess Celestia about. At first, she was simply unhappy, but then her mood quickly changed into panic. Throughout the rest of the episode, we can tell that things aren't right. Even Spike seems baffled by what's going on. And this isn't the first time we've seen Twilight act this way. In fact, as the series goes on, there are a handful of other moments just like this one. That breakdown was clear even to people who aren't familiar with mental illness or its symptoms. But there are also other smaller clues scattered about in other episodes that paint a full picture of just what Twilight is dealing with. The first clue is her orderliness. Ever wonder why her books have to be categorized? Why she gets so angry when they're out of order? Or why the cleanliness of the castle is often what's most important to her? Ever notice how she seems to have her own way of doing things and often corrects parts of her everyday life so that they fit her high standards? There's even an interesting scene where, to get Twilight's attention, Applejack moves one of her inkwells out of line with the others. Instantly, Twilight is aware and goes to fix it, moving it back into place. There's even another episode where we see just how important schoolwork and homework are to Twilight, and we get a front row seat to just what goes on in her head. Not only is she afraid that she'll be sentenced to an unthinkable doom, but she even showcases extreme anxiety when things aren't completely perfected to her liking. We watch her obsess over schedules, commitments, appearances, and even time with her friends every so often. If you're already nodding your head, then you've realized it too. It's possible that, given all the evidence, Twilight may have OCD. That just basically stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. The constant checking of things, organization, obsession, and fixation she displays are common symptoms. Just like with bipolar disorder, OCD often operates in four main categories. Checking, physical contamination or mental contamination, hoarding or collecting, and intruding or nonsensical thoughts. Twilight fits into at least two of these categories wholeheartedly. With OCD, sufferers spend increased amounts of time humoring their compulsions. We've seen Twilight do this on multiple occasions, staying up all night to clean, spending hours organizing her things, and allowing her anxiety over perfection to interrupt her home life, social life, and even daily normal functioning. One of the hallmarks of the last category I mentioned is when one dwells on a time-consuming question, sometimes without finding the answer. Or when one has intrusive, repetitive thoughts about something bad happening that they've somehow caused. Obviously, that's exactly what Twilight tends to do more often than not. Now, I'm making this diagnosis somewhat carefully because I'm not as well acquainted with OCD as I am with other mental illnesses I've discussed. But given the facts, I definitely think Twilight shows extreme symptoms of the illness that can't be ignored. And this makes her a good example of what OCD can look like in some cases. Case closed. Fluttershy. Known for being the most, well, shy of the main six, Fluttershy is another pony that we've seen become uncomfortable when in certain situations. And I'm not just talking somewhat uncomfortable. I'm talking run until you can't run anymore and hide under the bed until things blow over kind of uncomfortable. Fluttershy's extreme anxiety goes above and beyond normal fear. 
However, there are some situations that she's actually able to overcome. We see her get past her overall fear of Nightmare Night in a recent episode called Scaremaster, even being able to join her friends for the evening after some careful convincing and clever tactics. Now, in the end, it's still not a holiday she enjoys, but that's not the point. The point is, she was able to get past some of her fears. Often enough, when her friends come into play, her anxiety is lessened. But what does that mean illness-wise? I definitely think Fluttershy has anxiety, but anxiety can often be a symptom of a larger mental issue. In this case, I believe Fluttershy has social anxiety disorder, which can often be accompanied by panic attacks and goes above and beyond the simple diagnosis of anxiety. It also, most often, has to be triggered by being in a social situation and is characterized by feeling severe discomfort in social situations and extreme fear of being judged by others. If you followed Fluttershy's story, you know that she's pretty easily freaked out. But what you might not know is that the symptoms she displays are often symptoms of a panic attack, which could be caused by her social anxiety. Panic attacks are usually periods of brief unrest or upset where one breathes heavily or quickly, or finds it hard to breathe at all, sweats, may become dizzy or shaky, has an increased heart rate, may pace or run, and often needs to be coached until they're able to calm down. While they don't always have an exact source, they usually come about for a combination of reasons. Sights, sounds, situations, and stress can all add to what may cause a panic attack to happen. What clues us into Fluttershy's situation is that most often when she experiences a panic attack, it's because of a social situation she doesn't feel comfortable in. Honestly, I think she's probably the most easy to diagnose because the symptoms of social anxiety are easily seen in her life and continue steadily in each episode. While social anxiety is no less important, it is one of the more simple diagnoses that can, over time, become less intense. Learning to work with certain events, practicing taking deep breaths, settling one's mind, and finding a calming place to be when one feels overwhelmed are all ways that social anxiety can be lessened. We see early on that Fluttershy was bullied as a filly. This could have been what kick-started her anxiety, but it also means that her troubles had a starting point and a cause, which is good because certain things can be spoken about and worked with to bring her further relief and contentedness in the future when dealing with her diagnosis. In conclusion, I believe Fluttershy has social anxiety, but her outlook is extremely bright as she's seen making new progress each episode. Case closed. Applejack. I saved Applejack for later on in this video because she's probably the most well-adjusted, stable-minded pony out of all the main six. Not only is she able to work through any issues presented to her, but she's also steady, knows how to correct her mistakes, and doesn't seem to have any ongoing issues that keep her from making progress or continue to reoccur through the series. If anything, she's somewhat normal. There is one scene, however, that always makes me pause. In the episode Applejack's Day Off, we see just the lengths that Applejack goes through to keep her odd schedule up and running. I remember watching and re-watching this scene and thinking over and over about OCD. But, after her friends correct her lengthy procedures, she's not upset, but pleased instead. Glad that she's able to save time. So I can't really even slap the OCD label on her. Instead, I look towards a more debated compulsion, or obsession that's more common and may not even be completely qualified as mental illness. If you haven't heard of workaholism, or as it's more commonly called, work addiction, then I'm not surprised. It's not really a term many people use, which makes sense. You see someone working hard and you instantly just think that they're determined, driven, or maybe even caught up in what they do. The difference between that and someone who is a workaholic is that for workaholics, when they're separated from their work, they become extremely anxious. They don't just work casually, but obsessively, and like with OCD, it's hard for them to pull away from or ignore their urges. They're described as extremely driven and intensely purposeful. But the biggest symptom that caught my attention was that usually people with work addiction are using work to cover over or block out emotional pain. We know that something happened to Applejack's parents, and consequently they aren't around. So is this why Applejack's so caught up in her work? I'm not exactly sure, but it's a good theory that I couldn't pass up analyzing. Another symptom of work addiction is that the sufferer can become so obsessed with work that they always feel the need to stay busy. 
In the same episode I mentioned earlier, Applejack isn't happy just to attend the spa with Rarity on her day off. She has to find and fix the problems there before she can even think about being calm. While it doesn't cause her to put aside relaxing in the end of the episode, you can't miss the burning feeling of determination that's shown, which goes a bit too far in all honesty. She simply can't pass up a project, especially one that includes physical labor. And for this reason, I think it's highly possible Applejack may experience symptoms of work addiction. But I'm not going to say that for certain that's exactly what's going on, even though it is extremely likely. Since, just like with OCD, I'm not entirely familiar with the illness, I can't be completely certain. But it does seem possible. I'll let you guys decide. Case closed. Derpy hooves slash muffins. We're all familiar with the lovable cross-eyed pony Derpy. In fact, she became a fan favorite after her leap to fame, gaining so much popularity, she was finally shown in a few episodes as part of the actual storyline. Obviously, Derpy is not the most agile or skilled pony, and for unknown reasons, her eyes are looking off in two different directions most of the time. I've pondered adding Derpy to the end of this video because I think she deserves to be recognized and because I believe she has a condition that needs to be brought to light. I believe Derpy may have Down Syndrome. Now, before you go crazy in the comments, I know what you may be thinking. Miles, are you insane? How can you even say that? One, yes, I am insane, but all the best people are, right? And if you're watching this video, you're interested in insane. Secondly, I can make this assumption because of the facts. Let's take a look. First off, there are a few physical symptoms of Down syndrome, which include poor muscle tone, but also, more importantly, upward slanting eyes. Now, while Derpy doesn't necessarily have upward slanting eye sockets, her pupils do tend to stare off towards the corner of her eyes. An extreme optical difference between her and the average Towns ponies. And as if that wasn't enough of a sign already, there are also many behavioral and cognitive problems that someone with Down syndrome may share with our beloved Derpy. People with Down syndrome often have very poor judgment, which would relate quite well since we see Derpy engaged in multiple situations where she's unable to perform a simple task and ends up breaking something or bringing harm to herself or others. When Derpy first debuted in a simple intro scene with Rainbow Dash, her original voice recording sounded a bit like Rudolph the Reindeer. It was slow, somewhat labored, and curious. I've heard that since then her voice has been changed to make her sound differently, but I will always remember that first intro that afforded me a piece of valuable evidence that I needed. More often than not, people with Down syndrome learn slowly and have delayed development of speech or language. So it makes sense that she sounded somewhat hindered and deliberate. Pair that with her seemingly short attention span and sometimes impulsive behavior and she makes a very good candidate for this diagnosis. Case closed. I know some may find that last case shocking. Down syndrome is a diagnosis that's often life-changing for some. So are some of the other mental illnesses listed in today's video. What we have to remember is that even with a diagnosis that seems to be severe, every life is ultimately worth it. Every child, no matter how their mind works or what they have to face, deserves a chance at living life to the fullest. I hope that after watching today's video, you've had the chance to learn more about mental illness. Through understanding and education, we can learn to embrace difference, no matter what society may say. People with mental illness are just like everyone else. Their challenges just happen to be different than the average person. So next time you're tempted to judge someone, harass them, bully them, or even put a label on them, choose to look deeper. We're all struggling with something deep down. Choose to be compassionate and understanding, and I'm certain the world will be a better place because of it. After all, I'm only making today's video because I was inspired by my illness to help others understand theirs. Didn't see your favorite pony on today's list? Nominate them below in the comments. 
And if we get enough, maybe I'll make a part two. If you guys have any questions, comments, or just want to talk, the comments section is open and hate free. Any hateful comments will be removed, guys, so please do not hate. Just relate. I've also included links to the pages I use for reference in the description that'll tell you more about the illnesses I spoke about today, if you're interested. You can find that and more in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy your weekend and stay awesome.